Welcome to another back when I had a real camera version of Binging on Comics. What's funny about this episode is that this was the first time I had to edit on my own personal craptastic laptop, so you can definitely tell that there's some audio and visual issues, more so than now. But what I love most about this episode is that I started writing it. I picked this series because I wanted to have a negative review. With every other Binging on Comics I did before this, I was positive, showing why I enjoyed something like Planetary or Injustice, and maybe getting a bit over-analytical, but that's what Binging on Comics is for. So I wanted to try and get one where I wouldn't be naturally inclined to like it. I hope you have fun watching it. And remember, becoming a patron means that I will eventually be able to get back in front of the camera and make Binging on Comics this style again. I hope you enjoy watching. In December 2007, Gotham got a new protector. Lurks in shadow, hides in the park. Simon, Simon, Simon Dark. Raven-haired with a patchwork face. If you're good, he'll stay away. If you're bad, he'll make you pay. The supernatural savior of Gotham. Lurk in the shadows, hides in the park. Simon, Simon, Simon Dark. Yeah, this is going to be a real treat for those of you who say I don't do anything I dislike on this show. This is Simon Dark. My life is spiraling downward. I couldn't get enough money to go to the Blood Red Romance and Suffocate Me Dry concert. It sucks because they play some of my favorite songs like Stab My Heart Because I Love You and Rip Apart My Soul and of course Stab You Rip Stab Stab. And it doesn't help that I could Simon Dark. Diamond Sark. Live journal snark. In the whole grand scheme of things, a lot of people badmouth the 90s for being full of testosterone and shoulder pads. But what we don't talk about is that in the early 2000s, or even in the 2000s as a whole, we had the inverse of that. And we're still recovering from it. The 2000s was an awkward midlife crisis for comics. See, grim and gritty had changed. Now, instead of being about social darkness or anything about morality and whatnot, it became a very fake and dumbed down, teenaged, angsty sort of self-reflection. Instead of, hypothetical would be, if Watchmen was written in the 2000s, instead of Rorschach's lines dealing with the world he lives in and how he sees it and its effects on him, it would all become him going, my soul is an exploding dog carcass. I'll actually go with a direct quote from Simon Dark on this to push my point. Sometimes I dream I wasn't born at all. Dreams I was a fetus seed planted in the dirt. I know, it's not really the worst line that's offered, but it's from the first issue and it doesn't really spoil anything. So, let's get on to this. Putting it quickly and easily, there's a new vigilante in Gotham. He's very childlike, a bit insane and dealing with an evil, secret organization. All the while, getting crushed on by a girl he stole a book from, and pretty sure the coroner introduced early on wants to hop his jock too. But this is all about him discovering who he is ultimately. That's honestly the best way to describe this title. Besides bare bones mentions of them being in Gotham, it's a pretty standard horror story with the evil organization wanting to summon a demon, but Simon's on the case. However, after that story clears up, it opens to really feeling like it's an ongoing story on your hands instead of just a miniseries. Of course, as soon as that feeling gets there and I actually start enjoying it, it ends. The creative team behind this is Steve Niles and Scott Hampton. Steve Niles is a horror writer who's penned such things as the Star Wars Halloween special, Planet of the Dead, Wrote Bad Planet with Thomas Jane, Spawn, The Dark Ages, but his most popular is probably 30 Days of Night with Ben Templeton. Scott Hampton, on the other hand, has been prominent with things like Sandman Presents Lucifer, the JSA 80-page giant, Black Widow Breakdown. He even won the Special Harvey Award for Excellence in Presentation, and it really does show. The duo also worked together in 2005 on Batman Gotham City Lines, which I may cover later on in some Batman misc binging on comics, but that's a different bridge altogether. So, speaking of Scott Hampton's award for presentation, how does this hold up? This looks great. It's very much a dark comic that uses only a handful of colors 
to really keep a loose shape, yet has an oozy feel over every page, keeping up with the horror elements with it. However, if we're going to how the story lays out, then I'll be honest. The fact that we follow a few other characters in the first six or so issues isn't necessarily bad. It just really eats into the character moments for Dark outside of his narration, which early on really did get iffy and grating for me personally. Though, with the f first big storyline comes to a close, it does open to be something spectacular. I'd go into who Simon Dark is as a character and those around him, but really, that's what this book is all about. So going into it would only be horribly spoilerific for the characters himself. So, being my shortest binging on comics to date, let's get into the verdict. My verdict for this series is that even with a really shaky most of it, it is ultimately done well. The art is done well. The writing is done well. I think that this series is quite dripping with well. While the art is something I would swear on the Bible with, that's how good it is for me personally, everything is just doesn't come together. The parts are there, but overall it just doesn't connect with me. Right now there's just three trades out for it, so if you're interested in, I would just say find a friend who has any of the trades. There's no omnibus, although I would say that if an omnibus did come out for it, it may be worth it. Yeah. So, on the fake grading scale of numbers, it would probably be a 3.5, maybe a 4 if there was an omnibus out for it. But there isn't, so this may have also been the weirdest episode I've done, because I've been rambling or more than any. I'm the Archivist signing out. And it doesn't help that I couldn't get my hair into that flippy thing either. Like that guy from that band could do. Some days.